Hi guys, Jasmo here and today I'm gonna talk about my League Starter. This is going to be Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder. This build is very fast, it's a great mapper, can do all map mods, which is very useful at the League Start because you can run all maps. It's great for making currency early on, it works very well on a lower budget and it's also probably really good for the new League mechanic because it's versatile, doesn't care too much about many specific mods and again, versatile, can do all League mechanics, that's what you want in the league starter. So my reasoning for picking up the Poisons Concoction Pathfinder is as follows. I had specific criteria. There are some things about the league that you have to understand. Number one, heist is going to be insane. If you cannot make a character that is really good at heisting, you're going to be losing on potential insane profits. So my number one requirement is the character should be able to heist very efficiently and very quickly. Number two, I want to do the league mechanic, the new league mechanic from the Lake of Calandra, and I also want to do the new memories. So that means I want a build that will be able to handle rares. Rares are getting buffed, there's gonna be fewer rares, so we wanna use a character that uses marks, for example, that boost their damage rather than only curses, which are being getting reduced effect on, on these monsters. So you wanna get something that was gonna have good clear to do all of these league mechanics, but also has decent enough single target to not struggle on rares, and it's not gonna get blown up by them, so it needs to be also decently tanky. And the third requirement that I had is potential to swapping to magic finding later because I think magic finding is probably going to be very very strong. The magic finding gear is probably going to be more expensive this league because of the divine changes but it's also going to be extremely extremely powerful. There is a number of changes that I'm not going to go into now but magic finding is probably great this league so ranger is the class that I definitely wanted to start. So what I did for the past week was test Deadeye and Raider Lightning Arrow as well as Pathfinder Poison's Concoction. I literally leveled all of these characters separately on S SSF. I went through all of the leveling. You can check out VODs from my stream, level uh, some of the characters on stream, uh, and you can check out, check out the leveling folder for the Lightning Arrow. And I was comparing Lightning Arrow Deadeye to Lightning Arrow Raider to Poison's Concoction Pathfinder at level 61 Infinite Heisting, because this is what I cared about later on, because uh, later, later, later on I know how these builds perform, but I wanted to know early on which one is better, because there are certain things about them that I like and don't like. So in terms of the... Um, Raider versus Deadeye for uh, Lightning Arrow heisting early on. Actually, Raider is better. It does similar damage. It does actually slightly more damage. It's definitely significantly faster, um, even considering the Tailwind right on the um, Deadeye. Um, and it has good enough clear. You don't need all of these other projectiles. GMP is enough to carry that. Uh, and it's similarly tanky, right? So out of those two, uh, Raider is better at those very low levels with Lightning Arrow. Higher on, when you're getting like past white maps, you're getting to yellow maps, you're doing your uh, uber lab, then you want to transition to Deadeye if you're playing Lightning Arrow. But early on, Raider is actually superior. So if you're interested in the heist early on, uh, then I definitely recommend the Raider. The guaranteed phasing and the higher movement speed, some extra spell suppression is going to save your ass early on. It's going to be much nicer feeling build. Uh, but the Pathfinder is the thing that I really was interested in testing because if it turned out that the Pathfinder is at actually at least as strong as the other two at heisting, then I would definitely go with Pathfinder because Pathfinder is um, uh, a stronger build overall, it's tankier, it can do the bosses easier and it requires less gear if you don't want to invest into it. And you still can transition to MFing as a Deadeye later because your gear will be all entirely different. If you go like MF Wonder, you have to buy all of that gear. In ahead of time anyway. So I decided to go with the Poison's Concoction Pathfinder. By far the best out of these builds and incredibly fast even at early heisting. If you use your, your shield charge well, it's going to be actually the fastest one of the three. So let's go through the leveling and I'm going to explain to you uh, how you want to level this character. And before I do that, I also wanted to call out something. Uh, somebody linked today uh, a guide from the Max Roll website for the Poison's Concoction Pathfinder. And I looked at the passive skill tree and the passive skill tree has so many mistakes that are gonna make it so that your leveling would be really uh, unfortunately difficult for no apparent reason um, and this guide was made by I think Palsteron and then Titai Killer was doing the uh, leveling section. I love both of these guys, but I don't love this tree. So I'm going to tell you everything that's wrong with it, basically. And then I'm going to give you a good example of the tree, right? So first things first, um, going through these uh, projectile damage nodes is superior.
here early on because you want to hit the breakpoint for one shooting pack so that you don't have to shoot them twice and then this attack speed is not compensating for having to attack twice as much it's better on the pob to pad to pad your damage and it's faster for shield charge but you still shield charge fast enough and it's actually better to invest in those two especially considering that early on you're leveling with caustic arrow so you're gonna have a easier leveling time picking these nodes and in the end game we respect those nodes entirely and pick these dex nodes instead so that's why i would recommend going through this secondly i recommend passing through primal spirit instead of the heart of oak you don't need that life early but you definitely need the strength and intelligence in order to equip some of your skills you're gonna be struggling on strength and on int if you don't find the amulet early on or don't spend the extra transmute on that it's gonna be difficult you're gonna be struggling on mana because you're gonna have to run two life flasks as well with this skill usually uh, one for healing yourself one for the damage um, so definitely you want to make sure that you pick a primal spirit instead of that that's another mistake another mistake is not pathing to this like if you lower, lower the level um look at this they're picking they're picking this mastery the field medicine after like level like after like 40 passives this is something you should rush this is something you go first level 13 like you pass straight here through the primal spirit go down path to the field medicine and grab the flask mastery so that when you fight mervale at level 13 you never run out of flasks and you can actually use them to heal yourself if you're as good as tie tie killer and you don't need to press your life flask a single time because you're gonna perfectly dodge everything and aim everything and you have two the best possible flasks that you can have and you manage them perfectly and you never overshoot the the skills so that you use a little bit like one too many charge uh, then yeah perfect don't go for that but you're not tie tie killer you should pick the field medicine early on and the flask mastery of life uh flask gain one charge every three seconds uh, at level 13 to do mervale that's another mistake then next mistake is even bigger is not picking the claw mastery which is going to give you 10 life and five mana for each enemy hit with your attacks while you're shotgunning this is insanely powerful huge sustain for your mana and your life making your character insanely more tanky making it so that you can sustain blood rage very very easily be virtually immortal on some of the early boss fights and so on so this is massive thing that they're not picking that's another huge mistake uh, going for the um, onslaught early on is something i definitely agree with this is great one passive for the phasing if you want to pick that that's also cool i have no problems with that uh, but then they're not picking the poison chance okay they're not picking 100% poison chance this build has now 90% poison chance for no reason instead of having 100% poison chance right so you can pick this node and even if you wanted to grab these good nodes for the attack speed because attack speed is basically padding your pob damage uh, for this skill uh, you definitely want to pick the poison chance instead right so claw nodes and the poison chance is, is going to give you 100% poison chance uh, which is something you definitely want then they're also not going for um, the fleet food which means they're not getting the great reservation early on together with the charisma so you're not able to fit the aura as early unless they're passing through it like right away no they're not so uh, this is something that i would recommend picking early on especially if you're using for example smoke mine as well which is uh, smoke mine shield charge is one of the combos you can use while leveling this skill so fleet food is something i definitely recommend picking up early on so your leveling is actually faster right if you want to go faster pick up fleet food and we can pick up the mastery for the grace as well uh, another mistake that i notice is also not pathing let me go to like the end not pathing toward the fatal toxins fatal toxins is extremely extremely powerful these three points here for the fatal toxins are stronger than these three points for example right for the from the toxic strikes uh, so you definitely want to path to this and they also on top of that give you the chaos resistance which is very important early on because early on your gear is going to be trash and you're going to die to chaos damage so every single like 10 points of chaos res is going to matter to your character so this is something that i would definitely be picking up and also it will allow you to quicker take advantage of the chaos damage over time multiplier per chaos res once you get to like 40 percent chaos res so also instead of these nodes i would definitely go to this right so tons of mistakes in this pob i definitely don't recommend leveling like this so now let me give you a good example of how you actually want to go right so this is a pob that i made for the infinite heist testing this is level 61 character passive points from completing the skills that i would have normally in my run which shows here level 64 because some of the quests are uh, normally higher level than you would be um in this run but okay level 61 pob what do you want to do let me just go to like fresh tree so i can show you while leveling 
First you path through these nodes and then you path to the primal spirit so you can equip your uh, banner, you can do frost bling if you want, you can just equip more items and you don't have to struggle, you can actually grab a better um, amulet, you can get something with damage, you can get something with resistances, much easier uh, than being stuck without having these stats and having less mana and running out of mana. Next you want to path to this. And then you want to grab the life flask uh, gain one charge every three seconds same for mana flask this is level 13 character which is going to be fighting mervail now and this is going to help you so much it's going to make it much safer next we path through here and we pick up the claw mastery so we want to pick up the chance to poison this is not giving us anything else because of course we're not using claws we have an empty hand so it's a bit counterintuitive and people really usually don't think about picking that but it's insanely powerful when you pick up the mastery which gives you so much life and mana gain on uh, on hit uh, that is absolutely ridiculous and a huge mistake not to take and this is giving you 10 percent dot multi for poison and this is giving you a uh, 10 percent chance uh, and 10 percent chance to poison on hit then we are in fact rushing for the onslaught effect and onslaught uh, then you can pick up something like these two life points and pick up the life mastery early on the earlier you pick up the 50 life life mastery the stronger it is relatively to your total life right so that's why you want to pick it up early and not like save it for late that's another mistake that wasn't that pob that i noticed um, so that's something you want to do here then you want to go for the 100 chance to poison and once you have 100% chance to poison, now it's actually reasonable to pick up this node. 300% increase damage from uh, poisons if you poison a non-poisoned enemy. And then we go for movement speed, so you can pick up the quick step. And you can pick up either this for the increased cooldown recovery rate. And if you're not, uh, if you don't care too much about the cooldown recovery, just pick up the movement, sk movement speed from here. Then next we're pathing toward uh, Charisma. And as we pick Charisma, we can also pick the 25% Grace uh, Reservation Efficiency. Uh, after that, we can also path for this. If you really want to, you can pick up this Mastery, which is going to give you Utility Flask Charges. That's higher uptime of uh, your Jade Flask, which you should have sh close to this level, uh, as well as your Quicksilver. So it's going to be very, very helpful. Then we path for the damage big life damage movement speed actually you can prioritize this movement speed over the life but then we pick up the life and strength very very helpful then we go through the blood drinker and then we go for these passives in here for the fatal toxins other than that we can also path uh, for the life here we can pass for the accuracy if you need the extra accuracy um, and that's basically how the leveling early on looks like let me go to the actual infant heist oh yeah then we also have right this is not supposed to be picked here um 82 points yeah this is correct so we've got also the life here this is basically one passive for five percent uh, life uh, we've got also this life picked here grace reservation mastery can also be in this place and that's basically it so that's the leveling in terms of the ascendancy points uh here are your choices i've done a lot of testing level this character multiple times by far the best feeling for me is the nature's adrenaline it increases your attack speed and move speed which increases your shield charge you pop your flasks and you go like a speed demon uh, these the nature's boon is not important early on because you're going to be sustaining your flasks often enough you run two quick silvers early on so this is the more important point uh, then we get the nature reprisal because that allows us to actually hit more overlaps if you look at the skills if you look at the overlap going from seven overlap to eight overlap that's like um 10 more than 10k uh, damage right that's like uh, 14k damage right so going for the aoe here you need 26 percent aoe uh, in order to get additional overlap uh, for the first time so you meet this requirement here plus you get 15 percent more chaos damage and the third one depends on whether you're going to do infinite heisting or not if you do infinite heisting you go for nature's boon because you're not going to be hitting monsters all the time so you don't want to go for Master Surgeon, you're just going to be running and avoiding monsters for all of the time. You're not going to be getting that many flask charges, so Nature's Boon is going to make it so you're going to have like perma uptime on your Quicksilver and your uh, Jade Flask and maybe your Silver Flask and you're going to be running very, very quickly. So that's number three. Uh, and then number four is going to be Master Toxicist and you can swap also to Master Surgeon after... Um, after you are done with this like after you're doing some like higher tier maps you're gonna have higher density you're gonna be hitting more monsters uh, so you can swap to master surgeon because i think it's gonna be superior node to the nature's boon if you're actually hitting things right and it's also uh, it's also removing the bleed and uh, healing you so definitely good for mapping so that's what i would probably recommend now let's actually move on to the uh, league starter pob which is not the leveling pob so i made two versions i've made uh, one version which is more offensive one which is more defensive I'm 
gonna show you the one with armor because it has like an option to swap this so you can see we got like 4 million dps this is like peak dps okay this is with like just rare gear that is not too difficult to acquire you can see like life movement speed chance to avoid ailments which is just uh, an essence craft uh, and then one implicit this is actually the only implicit i have from the elders that i have on any items because this is the first thing you should try to do which is get complete ailment immunity right you can see this build has 100 percent shock freeze chill ignite sub brittle scorch and blind avoidance so all of these um no this is blind duration reduce blind duration i don't know uh, all elemental ailments uh, we got 100 percent avoidance and we're not playing raider right so uh, this is something that you should prioritize so movements speed life chance to avoid elemental ailments on the boots uh, but i'm gonna go through the gear uh, a little bit later and let me just show you the damage so it's like maximum damage while you're focused and you have everything like all the wither stacks a single target boss damage on pinnacle boss all right uh, with the setup uh, this is uh, four million and if you swap to a more offensive setup which basically means uh, replacing one of the auras replacing the determination for malevolence this is gonna give you 23 percent uh more damage so that's five million right very very acceptable for a league starter that is considered to be like shitty single target cannot kill bosses but it actually can kill bosses decently well right and you can do multiple setups but determination is gonna make you more tanky and it's gonna allow you to also run the val molten shell which is gonna make you even more tanky and safe uh, but let's go through the passive skill tree so this is what i recommend early on this is this is what you should be aiming for as you're going through the maps as you're acquiring your first currency and your first gear one of your first focuses should be to get a chaos cluster jewel a large chaos cluster jewel uh, so you can get one large one medium one small this is your aim you want to get chaos cluster jewel if you cannot get all of these notables here just get any eight passive cluster jewels with as many notables that give you like 30 percent increased chaos damage as you can wicked pal unwaveringly evil and holy grace and holy grace being the strongest one of all of these because it also has the attack speed this is what you want on your large chaos cluster jewel on the medium you want the circling oblivion this is the chaos damage over time circling oblivion this is the most damage you can get uh, and then flow of life is going to give you some extra life and region which is definitely uh, very helpful uh, for you while mapping and while bossing region is very very powerful um, and then we've got enduring composure which is going to give you the endurance charges before you have the enduring composure uh, small cluster which is easy to get you, you can literally just alt spam a small small armor cluster jewel until you get the enduring composure um, before you have that you can very easily anoint the aggressive bastion this is going to give you five percent chance to block 30 percent increased damage with ailments as well as 10 percent chance to gain endurance charge on kill while holding a shield so this is great for mapping if you want to be tankier while mapping very cool anoint to get very cheap only one black oil one violet one verdant but here we're running actually a cheaper anoint that is fixing some of our other issues mainly the accuracy and that is the weathered hunter so that's what i recommend early on for anoint uh, accuracy increased global accuracy and all elemental resistances very very good anoint very very cheap and crucial for this build because accuracy is very very important you always want to make sure that you have 100 percent chance to hit so um now that we talked about the cluster jewels and we talked about the anoint let's talk about the actual pathing in the tree so Charisma, very simple. Replenishing remedies and flask mastery. This is optional. Uh, if you play, like you can try playing without it. See how your character feels. If you can spam your flasks enough and you're happy, you never run out of flasks. Just don't run it. But if you're uh, if you're spamming your flasks a little bit too much, you don't have them set up perfectly or whatever. This is gonna help your character feel much better. Um, then we've got the chaos mastery uh, for one percent chaos damage over time multiplier per four percent chaos res. It's pretty easy to get chaos res on this character, um, especially later on later on you actually want to uh, go for like 90 percent chaos res with the divine flesh but at this stage we have 40 percent chaos res and that is enough to justify running this because that means we're basically getting 10 percent chaos damage over time multiplier which is a good way to spend a point um, then we're passing through this uh, through this chaos setup then we're passing simply one point here we're picking the uh, fatal toxins uh, for the poisons masteries we are picking the 300 percent increased damage um, and then we're picking also the uh, poison mastery poisons deal damage faster both of these are going to help the new mark um, you'll notice here in the skills uh, i'll try to update it when we have the 
the new skills, but right now there's a placeholder uh, sniper's mark, which is increasing my damage actually significantly uh, because we still do high hit, uh, high amount of hit damage. But uh, this is going to be replaced by the alchemist's mark, which is going to give you a dot on the ground, which is based on the strongest poison on the enemy. And that's also one of the reasons for playing Pathfinder. I wanted to try out the new mark and uh, Pathfinder is significantly better with that new mark than Occultist, for example, because Occultist has access to this mastery, right? The poisons deal 300% increased damage on non-poisoned enemy, but Pathfinder also has something that is gonna help you while bossing, which is poisons you inflict during any flask effect have 20% chance to deal 100% more damage. So as you hit with five uh, flasks, with five projectiles, one of them is likely to deal double damage, right? And that is the one that is going to be uh, the, that is going to be giving the damage to the mark, right? The dot damage from the alchemist's mark is based on the strongest poison on the target, and it's based on the DPS of the strongest poison on the target, which is why I'm thinking that the poison mastery that uh, like poison deals damage faster could affect it as well. This is something I'm going to be testing. If that doesn't work, you can also run the uh, uh, poison duration, right? You can also run the plague bearer uh, maximum value, whatever you want to run, right? But poison sifting that inflict damage faster is going to be good for that new mark. Um, so that's what we have for the poison masteries. Um, here we are pathing to the top because we want to grab whispers of doom as well as the influence and the extra reservation. Whispers of doom are going to allow us to run despair on hit, which is going to come from a ring. This is something you should prioritize very early on. It's a huge damage increase while mapping. Uh, and then we're going to also run the mark. So mark on hit plus the spare on hit all the curses are automated no hassle easy playing um, then we got the influence cluster for extra reservation so we can earn all the auras we want and then we've got the atrophy which is a very good amount of damage this is also giving us some extra strength as well as life uh, very efficient use of uh, this area uh, other than that, uh, what else are we running? We're running some leech uh, for life and mana as well as, as life and mana on hit because later on we are dropping the claw cluster because it becomes less efficient. Uh, we got suppression, suppression here because we got 100% spell suppression chance. Um, we got some accuracy, uh, we got some um, nodes here that give us not only life but also chance to avoid elemental ailments, to cap the avoid elemental ailments to 100%. And then we've got mark nodes which are giving us frenzy charges. So because we're using a mark, uh, another reason uh, why using the mark is good is because we can get frenzy charges on bosses. Other than that use, people have been using this tech where they pick up the sword nodes and they get a little bit of block and they pick up these sword nodes, but some of them are like completely useless. It's very low amount of block. It's like 2% block per node. Uh, this one gives 6%. Um, and then they get frenzy charge mastery that gives you 8% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a unique enemy. In my opinion, this is an inferior setup to the mark setup, which gives you 20% increased damage with hits and ailments against the marked enemy, increased effect of your marks, all useful nodes that are pretty good. A calling strike against mark enemy, which are admittedly on poison builds and dot builds in general, even if they have a hit component, calling strike is not great, but it's still gonna help you every now and then, especially against the big bosses. This is gonna be where it's noticeable. Um, and then we've got the mastery, which instead of 8% actually gives us 10% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a marked enemy. And the cool thing about this is, this says when you hit a unique enemy, and this is when you hit a marked enemy, which means even without blood rage while mapping as we're hitting rare enemies, we can sustain the frenzy charges. So this is vastly superior setup in my opinion, and you wanna be in this area anyway, because you're gonna pick the cluster jewel here next. So uh, that's when it comes to the passive skill tree. I think I went over everything when it comes to that. Now let's go over the skills. So what are we using in all of our sockets? Everything here is, here is set up to be um, roughly like, you know, we're level 95 and we have 20, uh, uh, level 20 gems. So like no 21 gems, no quality except for Poison's Concoction. Why does Poison's Concoction have 14% quality? Because if I lower this by just one, you'll see what happens. You, you look at calculations and we have radius of our Poison's Concoction projectile AOE is 21. If I lower this by just 1% to 13, you can see the radius is now 20. So you need 14% quality on your poison's concoction, which is gonna give you 7% increased uh, area of effect. And that extra radius makes it so that instead of eight projectiles, you're overlapping nine projectiles. It's 
like almost half a million damage. It's really, really important to uh, get that 14% quality on the poison concoction as soon as you can. Then we're running greater volley and GMP, self-explanatory, more projectiles, they're overlapping, shotgunning, and we're actually taking advantage of all of them. Um, then we're running unbound ailments. This is like the best uh, support gem that we can put in here. We're running also void manipulation and cruelty. Cruelty is my preferred setup and in my opinion it's superior to uh, other ones. If you get enough cruelty, you can check the POB. Uh, we've got uh, combined DPS, we can do full DPS in here and we can select uh, non-awakened level 20 gems and as you can see cruelty is showing above here 38 compared to 34 but that is only assuming if you do the maximum hit damage but it is, it is very uh, common for you to get like 40 percent the hit is very significant and because we're running um uh, because we're running cruelty, we are increasing the hit further, right? It's pretty easy to get 40% cruelty, and even with slightly lower, it's still uh, really, really good because you're getting more leech, more mana leech, uh, and more life leech, which is very nice compared to like deadly ailments, which not only doesn't give you the bonus to the damage with hits, it's also punishing you. It's giving you 40% um, more damage with ailments, but 80% less damage with hits, which means your leech is going to go down significantly, right? So you're going to have less mana and less life recovery. So that's why cruelty is the superior setup here that I would be running. Um, so level 20 of course. Um, so that's the setup here. Uh, then we have our auras which are Grace Determination and Herald of Agony and you can play with Malevolence instead of Determination if you want to do more damage like 20% more damage but you're gonna be a little bit less tanky right. Uh, Flame Dash for mobility so one of these auras is not here that's a four link basically you can put that in a helmet for example. Uh, later on there's an option of using uh, something like the helmet from, from Betrayal that gives you EB and you can get some more reservation and put an extra aura in here but right now we're just running flame dash for just some easy mobility that just like could quickly dodge out of stuff because for most of the time we're going to be shield charging but sometimes you need to jump over a gap so flame dash is good for that next we've got withering step plague bearer and increased aoe withering step applies wither of course you can run it on the left click early on while you're leveling you can also apply second wind to your other movement skill which would be like a smoke mine or a flame dash and that is going to allow you to have a secondary use so even if with step is putting them on cooldown they're still going to be able to be used and you're going to basically permanently sustain like wither step on left click while always being able to use more your mobility skill and then plague better they're in shield because normally you want to get later a shield with like a plus two to level of support gems with empower and get your plague better to higher levels but early on that's just what we run increased aoe is the only thing we need and then we've got shield charge with faster attacks Using that for mobility makes you move really, really fast. And then we got cast when damage taken, Val Molten Shell. Uh, I like running cast when damage taken to trigger about a thousand damage hit. Allows you to run uh, the Val Molten Shell or whatever mobility skill you're using at a decently high level. Doesn't increase the strength requirement too much because we still need some strength on our gear in order to meet those requirements. Um, and one thing that you can do if you don't have enough strength is to instead of Val Molten Shell, run um, something like Steel Skin which is gonna uh, not require as much strength. And without enough strength, you also cannot use determination. So instead of determination, you're just gonna be using malevolence, right? But once you get enough strength on your gear, you can use determination and you can also use Val Molten Shell with cast when damage taken. Then we got Wither with Spell Totem because for bosses, the withering step is not going to be enough. You won't really want to apply the 15 stacks of Wither because if you're not applying 15 stacks of Wither, you're gonna be only applying six usually, which lowers your damage tremendously by like a mil 1,200,000 damage damage or something like that so you definitely want the spell totem that you can drop on boss fights so you can have more wither stacks and then we got mark on hit Sniper's Mark is as a placeholder here, however, it still increases our damage, uh, but we're going to want to run with the Alchemist's Mark and you can just put it in the POB once it's available, compare the damage and see which one you want to run. And then we've got Despair, which is coming from a ring. And speaking of the ring, let's go over the gear then. Uh, so for the gear, we've got, for a weapon, we've got a shield. I prefer using a shield that gives me some movement speed as well early on. So that is an evasion base and it's easier to roll spell suppression on them. So all you want on them is three stats basically and craft the fourth one. Spell suppression, you can still get like 20% spell suppression on the shield and the body armor and that's going to be enough to cap you without picking up too many passives on the skill tree. Uh, then we've got maximum life, as much life as you can get. And you either want strength or chance to avoid elemental ailments. To get strength on evasion base you would have to use an essence so you can just spam essences until you get some spell suppression and life for example. Um, and then you can craft the chance to avoid elemental ailments uh, once you get that craft. Um, for the helmet we have a simple 
simple uh, simple um, helmet with life and resistances. So we got a couple of resistance rolls, we got a bunch of life, and then we can craft the betrayal craft, increase duration of ailments you inflict while focused. So this is still going to add a ton of damage. This craft has been nerfed, but it's still very, very, very powerful. You can do this while simply having to do like a lot of single target damage so when you are starting to hit a map boss you pop the focus or when you're hitting like an essence mob you pop the focus that's when you want to use it when you really want to maximize the duration of your poisons because it's going to take you longer to kill that enemy um, then we've got a chest piece which doesn't have the gravitious mode because the gravitious mode is not supported by the pob here yet uh, but i simply put it in the configuration setup so we got the crafted one which goes up to six percent fist taken as fire and fist taken as lightning uh, and uh, basically other than that the chest piece has spell suppression and life spell suppression life maybe like some evasion on region or region i put it on the gear because usually you're gonna have this randomly on all kinds of pieces of your gear uh, so this is a reasonable chest piece and you simply get life spell suppression and life and craft the um gravitious mod so that you can have some physical damage mitigation because uh, the character can really benefit from that a lot because we are uh, you know early on might have an you might have an issue of like running the determination uh, so very very good to get and then we've got the gloves which you want like life res and accuracy this is what you want on them as much accuracy as you can get as you can get this is going to free you up from uh, getting accuracy on other pieces of gear but you can also find accuracy on uh, the shields on the helmet uh, you can craft it on the rings um, so there's a bunch of places you can get accuracy but gloves are one of the places where you can find them very commonly uh, there is also a craft for um, for chaos damage on gloves so i wanted to showcase that if you have accuracy on the gloves you can craft the uh, chaos damage to attacks um, then we've got boots on boots the most important thing is the ailment avoidance and the movement speed so you want to get as much movement speed as you can as much life as you can obviously as on pretty much every other piece of your, of your gear but you want to use an essence to craft the 35 percent chance to avoid the elemental ailments and then you want to use an implicit i think it's either searing exarch or uh, eater of worlds i actually don't remember which one it is but you can check out check out on uh, like craft of exile uh, which of these implicits is that and 20 percent chance to avoid elemental ailments is gonna uh, cap you with the rest of your of our setup so that's what you want on the boots just quick element avoidance movement speed life you don't even need any resistances on that you can copy resistances in other spots but ailment avoidance is pretty important uh, then we've got an amulet uh, on amulet we got some strength so you want strength and int on an amulet uh, life and some res if you can and damage over time multiplier early on uh, you can also get plus one to all skills plus one to chaos but early on you don't even need that uh, and you can craft minus mana cost for example to alleviate some of the uh, mana cost that we have because we don't pick up a lot of int we don't pick up a lot of mana region so minus mana cost on uh, rings is and on amulet is something really really helpful uh, for the rings the, one of the first upgrades that you should go for as soon as you possibly can is a hunter ring with despair it doesn't really matter what it's going to have on it obviously you'd like to have some resistances in life and if you can craft uh, either accuracy or chaos damage to attacks that's going to be great and the ideal base for that would be an amethyst ring because it's going to help you cap your chaos res so that's what you want on the ring that's where your curse on hit is going to come from the other ring is simply life resistances and we've got uh, minus uh, mana cost that's uh, that's the craft that we also have on an amulet uh, which is going to help your mana and then for the belt you want a stygian vice because for a stygian vice you can also use a jewel with tons of accuracy which is very very nice so you want stygian vice with just some life and resistances that's the main thing that you want if you get some armor or, ev or evasion on it that's also great if you get some mana cool doesn't really matter life and res on a stygian vice and then for a uh, uh, for the searching eye jewel for the abyss uh, jewel you want to get accuracy life and if you can also enemies withered by you have minus two percent to all uh, resistances which includes the chaos resistance so that's really really cool flasks pretty important for this build because we're playing pathfinder and we're also playing a poisons concoction build so it really really matters uh, the life flasks that you want to focus and prioritize on is a saturated divine life flask you want to get it to 28 percent quality as quickly as you can so that's why you want to prioritize betrayal pick some betrayal nodes on your atlas do betrayal early on 
you're gonna be able to get like white sockets high quality scarabs it's uh, it's really good money early on to do that and you're also gonna be able to like use ashling to craft early on ashling is not that expensive if you want to sell it but you're gonna be able to use it to craft like your boots or your chest or whatever else you want um, and so the flask is super important this number that it says like recovers 5222 life is the number that you care about that is basically your base damage that is being taken for the poisons concoction so that's what you want to uh, focus on very early on that's basically your weapon right um, that's how you want to look at it then we got a jade flask and we've got also a granite flask for granite flask i recommend the rumi's concoction because it's also going to give you some extra block uh, for jade flask you can get uh, some increased evasion you can also get some like reduced curse effect on you uh, stuff like that quick quicksilver flask you want to get for all of these flasks uh, it's really good to get like reduced charges uh, used because that is gonna make it so that the flasks refill quicker right it's more efficient to have the reduced charges used than like more charges more charges is actually not good but reduced charges use is very very good uh, quicksilver increased movement speed as much as you can get on it uh, and then we've got a silver flask as well which is gonna give us onslaught make us move hard uh, move faster and then reduced effective curses on you during flask effect is a very good mod to get for mapping as well uh, and then we've got sockets which is the last thing for the items so uh, we've got the large socket large chaos eight passives if you can get the notables on it that give you 30 percent increased chaos damage that's amazing if not use it anyway uh, then we've got a medium cluster chaos dot ideally with circling oblivion and then something that gives you either damage but i think flow of life is a very good balance of stats um, then we've got the small cluster for enduring composure and then we've got jewels that are gonna fill the holes in our resistances for example right so we got a viridian jewel here uh, that is fire and lightning res and then you get some chaos dot uh, chaos damage over time multiplier and uh, increased life and then we've got another one another example fire and cold res some life and chaos damage right those are kind of kinds of the jewels you want if your resistances are fine what you're looking for is like chaos dot multi attack speed while holding a shield and maximum life right those are the modifiers that are very good and very helpful for this build and that is basically it so this build is going to feel very very fast it's going to feel decently tanky be able to do all content um, and if you want to upgrade this build further uh, i'm probably going to be uh, making another video as i'm playing the league when i make a better pob looking at what's good in the league what are the options with the crafting of the new gear what's available and i'll make like a higher budget pob but this is basically the league starter um, that's it if you have any questions let me know in the comments below hopefully this is going to give you all the information that you need to get uh, in order to get started this league uh, with a very very powerful build that's going to be able to do all content uh, this is probably the this is the build that i definitely recommend if you don't have like a specific plan in terms of like oh i really want to do uber bosses because this build is not great for uber bosses you can make it do uber bosses but on a much higher budget right which uh, if you really want to play uber bosses you would play something like seismic trap still or something like that right or you could play uh, maybe like ice trap or maybe miner something like that probably some minion builds actually are gonna be very good uh, but this is not great for uber bosses but it still can kill like your uber elder your maven uh your searing exarch your eater of worlds you can get your own watchstones uh, with this character uh, and you can have fun doing all of the content uh, from the new league mechanic and that's basically the goal of a league starter just something fast that doesn't care about map modes can make currency quickly and you can get your own watchstones with right that those are the requirements for me for a league starter at least so thank you so much for watching and see you next time have a good league start bye bye